Hi guys, welcome. I'm Taylor Franco from Franco's Fleet. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to go over the instructional video on how to operate everything that has to do with the OG R Pod. So right now we're going to go over the damage walkthrough. The purpose of this walkthrough is to set an agreed upon condition baseline of your RV or travel trailer that you're renting. You should do a comprehensive review of the entire interior and the exterior, including the undercarriage and the roof. Point out any and all pre-existing damage and record it on this departure form. So now we're gonna go over rental responsibilities. The tires, if anything should happen to them or your responsibility, the cost would be the cost of the tire. Um, in terms of dumping, if you guys aren't comfortable with dumping the tanks or you need me to do so, that cost would be $100. Uh, for the mileage, you're allowed 1 million miles per day. If you can meet that, I will clap and applaud. The generator, you're also allowed 24 hours of generator use per day. Um, moving forward, damages, any damage incurred during your trip will be whatever the damage costs. Um, lastly, fuel, we provide all of the propane needed, so you will not need to re uh, refuel the tanks. And late fees will be 8 p.m. If you return later than 8 p.m. on your reservation date, we'll charge you one day rental. So this is a reminder that any damages that aren't written down on the departure form that are on the return form will be the renter's expense. It's important to remember when backing up the trailer that you want to get it to as close to your utilities as possible. That way you have more room on the opposite side to enjoy your campsite. All the equipment used for the mechanical function of the trailer, such as the jack, the leveling shims, the hoses, um, and the power cord will be located in the back compartments of the trailer. Hi guys, Taylor here from Franco's Fleet. Um, we're working with the little guy, Tag, and we're gonna talk about the maneuverability of this little travel trailer, and we'll get started. So first off, this thing weighs less than a thousand pounds which makes it really easy to back up and move around even if you're not that comfortable. We have a standard wheel here. So that wheel will go right on this jack. We're gonna get the keys and get the one labeled master lock and that's gonna be the key to unlock this particular trailer lock. Loosen this up and you can crank this as far up as you want to. Now I'm gonna disconnect the trailer lights the safety chains. Kind of rope these out of the way. Upon doing that, you see how easy it rolled there. So now I'll jack it up as high as I want to. And from that point, once you're on a smooth level ground, and you're free. You can literally drag and move this thing whichever direction you want. And I'm only, I'm not pushing that hard, I'm only pushing with one hand even. So it's not that heavy. So if you're not comfortable with backing up, and I wasn't that good at backing up this little small trailer to be honest with you, but it's easy to direct it any which way you want. So once we've taken the trailer off of the tow vehicle, we're gonna go ahead and use the stabilizer jacks. These are located in the rear of the trailer on either side. So to operate these, you're gonna go here, you're gonna to twist to the right, and you're gonna lower them just enough to give you just a little bit of stability there. So now if there was any pressure in the back here on the bed, you can see that it's firm and the trailer's not gonna be wobbling around. So on this side of the trailer is where we're gonna keep the mechanical utility crate. So we'll open it up, grab that, and see what we got. Let's 
In here, you're gonna find the waste bag for dumping the gray water tank. You're gonna find your hose for filling up for city water. Also, your carrier for the gray water tank. It's gonna be here. You're gonna have your space heater for inside. And lastly, you're gonna have your electrical plug-in. Which will go over. There you go. So what you're gonna wanna do is plug this power cord into the trailer. It's gonna have a V-notch here. You're gonna match the V-notch to the V-notch portion located right here. Once it's connected, you're gonna turn to the right. Then you're also gonna turn the lock to the right. There we go. Maybe. There it is. Once you have that lock nice and tug, just give it a pull, make sure that it's not gonna come off. Then you're gonna take the other end of the cord and depending on if your site has a 30 amp cord or a 20 amp, you would use the adapter. I'm gonna go to the power source, plug it in, and now you have power. We're gonna talk about the generator. So if you've rented the generator from us, we provide one full tank of propane in doing so. Please notice all the Gorilla Tape that's located on the top of the generator. That's where the gas goes. Please do not put gasoline in our generator. I'll be more than happy to provide you with enough propane to make it last. To operate, you're going to want to come on this side. You're going to plug the hose in into this quick connect. Push in. There, it's locked. You're gonna to wanna to make sure to turn the propane on. That's gonna be your power source. Then you're gonna hit the battery switch, which is located here. Pull the choke out. Then you're gonna... Now the generator's on. It also is equipped with a quiet mode, which is currently engaged right here. Want it quieter than that, we'll turn it on. It's also important to note, please turn off the battery when the generator is engaged. Because there's no need for the battery. Once the generator is started, you're going to take your surge protector. You're going to plug that directly into the generator. It's going to read blue and green. And then from that point, you can make your direct connection to the generator. It's important that nothing is plugged into the generator while the generator is going into startup mode. Now, to turn off the generator, what you're going to do is you're going to remove all of the electrical components. Then you're simply going to turn off the power source, which is the propane. And that's it. Talk about the water operation in the trailer. First thing we're gonna need to do is grab the keys. We're gonna grab the black key. We're gonna use it to unlock this. It's gonna swing open. Now for the water, we have two options. We have a fresh water reservoir, which has no threads on it. And then we have the city water connection. So the city water connection is the one listed on the right hand side. So once we've determined if we have direct city water, which is gonna be a spigot at your campsite, or if we need to pre-fill the reservoir if our campsite doesn't have a spigot. So next, I'm gonna grab the hose that we provide. I'm going to take one end of the hose, and because we do have a spigot here, I'm going to turn it accordingly. Maybe, hopefully your hands aren't as wide as mine, so some of this stuff is a little bit easier for you. So once I have a good solid connection there, I'm gonna take the other end of the hose. It's gonna have the water pressure regulator on it. And I'm gonna plug that in to the spigot.
like so. Make sure that's good and tight. Please make sure that you have the water pressure regulator on there. Um, in all trailer systems, the plumbing is made out of kind of inexpensive plastic. And so this will help regulate the pressure of the water so it doesn't blow out any of the plumbing. Once you're confident you've made proper connections, you can go ahead and turn on the water. So this trailer is equipped with a gray water bag. The only thing that's gonna be in here is um, water from the sink. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna turn this switch to the on position and that's gonna open the valve on this cover. It says off and then on. So that's gonna open the valve here and it's gonna allow water to fro flow freely into the bag. And to hook that up, there's a connection down here. You're gonna turn that, hand tighten, and therefore the water from the sink is gonna flow into the bag. There we go. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take the bag off, and if it's heavy, there's a carrier located in your mechanical bucket. And that way, you'll be able to take it to the bathroom and dump it down the drain. This is also mostly soapy water, so you can dump it and dispose of it um, in the grass if you'd like. This is just a good way to keep it away from your campsite. Now we're gonna talk about the portable fire pit. Um, to operate this, the first thing you're gonna do is take this connection and plug it into the propane. Next, you're gonna make sure the propane valve is on. Take the lid off. Down on this side, you're gonna turn the lever to where it says ignite. Use your barbecue lighter. And there you have it. This is great for when you're in a position where there's a fire ban or a wood burning ban, and you're able to still enjoy s'mores or have a fire at night. And now to turn it off, you're just gonna turn this lever to the right hand side to off. Turn the propane off. Also, I strongly suggest letting it cool down a little bit if it's been on for a while before you actually pick it up and try and put it away. Now we're gonna move into the back kitchen area of the little guy trailer. So we're gonna use this key to open the back. And it does have two locks, but I only use the one. And at that point, Turn the knob, turn the knob, and the back will open up. So here we have the sink and a cutting board. We also have some cabinetry down here, some Clorox wipes. And this area here, will, this will be where we keep the kitchen set that is available upon request. And then we also have the Norco refrigerator, cooler slash refrigerator. It pops out, it opens up, and so it does run on power. It runs on shore power and off battery power if you're um, camping off grid. And that's pretty easy to operate. You're gonna hit the power button. After you turn the switch on down below, then the power is gonna come on. And here you're gonna select the temperature in which you want the cooler to be powered at. Usually takes about 30 minutes for the Norcold cooler to get to get cold, but once it does, it freezes up pretty good. So when you're operating the sink, remove the cutting board. You're just gonna pull this forward. And turn it off. There you have it. If you are on city water connection, there'll be no need to turn on the water pump. If you have the fresh water tank filled up, you're gonna hit the switch here, marked water pump, and it's gonna pull water from your fresh water reservoir, which is located right here. So in the front cabin here of the trailer, we have this compartment, and here you'll have the battery. You'll also have the propane tank. So to turn that on, you're gonna turn the valve to the left. That's gonna open it up. And that's what's gonna power, or excuse me, add gas to your burners in the back. We'll go to the back. So you have two burners located here. You're gonna turn them to the light position. Then with your barbecue lighter, you're gonna hit that. And you'll have two working stoves. 
So upon entering the trailer, we have a number of features in here. We have the air conditioning. We have the television, which operates on the Jensen Bluetooth receiver. We also have a couple of charging ports here. We have USB port and we have your standard outlet. There's a lot of cabinet space on either side. This is where we keep the remotes for the television. And then on that side also is the switch for the AC fan. You have the controls here to turn them on and the temperature at which you want it at. Then we also have the switch here for the porch light. This will turn on your exterior light. We have cup holders located here. There's a fire extinguisher. There's a smoke alarm located in this compartment here. And then we also have the sunshade. This opens this way, this opens this way. If you want to open this big window, pushes out like so. And then if you don't want it to be sunny in here, you'll bring this down. So working to the passenger side of the trailer, we have another option for ceiling lights and then the porch light on the passenger side. We also have more sunscreens here. These go down like so. The window is also going to open. So that way you get a decent amount of airflow coming through. And then lastly, we have the Bluetooth setup. So the power button is here. And I can't have flower. I, I, yeah, and I then like we can it. switch to Bluetooth, AM, FM, auxiliary, or DVD player if you wish. So now we're going to operate the ceiling fan. We're going to turn the lock to unlock. We're going to rotate this lever here to open the hatch. And the cool thing about this one is you have a variable speed, but you can also switch direction. So notice it's going that way, one direction. Then I hit this switch, we'll go back the other way, depending on if you want airflow coming in or airflow going out. Always make sure to shut the hatch completely when you're done. And turn the lock. So with the little guy rental, we do provide linens at no extra charge. For the purpose of this video, we went ahead and made the bed, but during your rental, we will actually ask you to make the bed yourself. We also ask that you use a mattress protector. That will help keep the mattress sanitized from the next renter. In the event that you should have a flat tire, we do have a spare tire located with the little guy. It's located under the trailer here and you're gonna use a three-quarter socket to lower it, which we will provide. 